Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today's question was suggested by a viewer, thanks to Tim the Destructor, for this one. Amy controls Hoffrey and Divine Visitation. What will the tokens that Hoffrey generates look like? Okay, so before we get to the actual question, I want to build my way up to it because the complexity for this one is a little bit above average, and there's a lot of different ways that Wizards has worded effects like this in the past, and a lot of different changes to the answer can result from the different wordings that they've used. So, first of all, we're going to take a look at this case. We're going to use Rite of Replication to copy a grizzly bear while we have Divine Visitation out. What will that token look like? And so for the answer to this one, hopefully this should be pretty straightforward. Anytime you're going to make a token, the thing that's making the token is going to have some instructions that define what the characteristics of that token is going to be. Now, the way that Divine Visitation works is anytime you're going to make a creature token, it says we're going to throw away all of those instructions that make the characteristics of that token, and we're going to use my characteristics instead, that being the 4-4 white angel with flying. So, for example, if we were going to make a 2-2 black zombie token, we would throw that information away and make a 4-4 white angel token with flying. Alright, so in order to apply that situation to what we have with Rite of Replication here, let's take a look at what the characteristics of the Rite of Replication token is going to be. And so, we can see that those are just going to be a copy of the Grizzly Bear's characteristics. Now, Divine Visitation is going to throw all those away, and it's going to put its own characteristics in their place. And so, you're going to end up with a 4-4 white angel creature token that has flying. Okay, so now let's see how it would work with this other card, Heat Shimmer. So we're going to make a Heat Shimmer copy of the Grizzly Bear. And we can see that it's going to probably work out pretty much the same way as it did in the previous example, but maybe with a little extra wrinkle in there, because what Heat Shimmer says is it's a copy of the Grizzly Bear, except it has some other abilities. Now, as you can see here, the Comprehensive Rules defines these as exceptions or modifications to the copying process. So what that means is the copying process is going to look at the characteristics that the Grizzly Bears has, and it's also going to add those in to what those characteristics are. So in this case, when we're making this creature token, the creature token is going to have all the same characteristics as what the Grizzly Bears has, except we're also going to write in there haste, and at end of turn we're exiling this. So what does that do with the Divine Visitation? Well, it turns out that Divine Visitation is going to apply in exactly the same way. It's going to take that look at the characteristics that we already defined for this token and throw those all away. So all the hard work we did, writing in haste and at end of turn exile this, all of that work is going to go to waste because when the Divine Visitation applies its effect, then all of those are going to get thrown away and we're just going to end up with a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. And so the token is going to look exactly the same as the Rite of Replication token that we made in the previous example. Alright, now we're ready for level 3. Level 3, we're going to use Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker to make a copy of Grizzly Bears. And at first glance, this would seem like it's very similar to the previous two examples. But take a close look at what Kiki Jiki's ability says. If you look, it says that the token that you create is a copy of the Grizzly Bears, except it has haste. And so we know that the haste is going to get written into the characteristics of the creature token that we're generating. However, the sacrifice at the end of turn is not part of the characteristics. Notice that it doesn't say the token has sacrifice it at end of turn. It just says sacrifice the token at end of turn. Now, what that means is that that is not part of the characteristics of the token that we're generating. Rather, that's going to be an extra instruction on the Kiki Jiki's activated ability. So in order to perform the instructions on Kiki Jiki's activated ability, we're first going to make the creature token, and then we're going to sacrifice that token at end of turn. Because this is not part of the characteristics, the angel is not going to throw that part away. It'll throw away the part where it gets haste, but the thing where you have to sacrifice it at end of turn, well, that's still going to be in play. Because this is not part of the characteristics of the token that you are making. And so therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to have a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying, and it will also not have haste, but what we will have to do is sacrifice this token at end of turn. Alright, now we're ready for level 4. Level 4 is Cogwork Assembler. As you can see here, this one is worded different way still. So, with this, you can see that the token gains haste. So, again, haste is not something that we're putting into the abilities that the token has the way that Kiki Jiki did it. Rather, this is another step in the ability that resolves. So, when you use Cogwork Assembler to make a copy of Cogwork Assembler, then what you're going to do is start out with Cogwork Assembler's characteristics, 
the divine visitation throws those away. And then after that, the next step in the resolution of that ability is for the token that we just created to gain haste. And then the next step is we're gonna have that instruction to exile that token at the end of turn. Because neither the gaining haste nor the exile at end of turn thing is part of the characteristics of the token. Rather, those are things that the ability that made the token stapled on after the fact. Because of that, we're going to have both of those things on the token that we create. So when we make the angel token this time, it is going to have flying, but it also is going to have haste. Unfortunately, it also is going to get exiled at the end of turn. Okay, so now that we have all of that set up, we're finally in a good position to answer this question that we had at the very beginning of the episode and in the thumbnail. So if we have a divine visitation and we use Hoffrey to make a token, what will the token's characteristics be? Go ahead and pause the video if you need some more time to think or review what we said previously. Okay, so with this one here, hopefully everyone was able to identify that the thing getting an ability that returns the card to the graveyard is an exception to the copying process. Because it uses that specific phraseology, that means that we're actually writing that ability in to the copyable information when we make the token. Now, of course, what that means is that all of that is gonna get thrown away by the divine visitation when it makes the token into a 4-4 angel. So what that means is that we will not have the ability that returns the creature card to the graveyard. The thing that makes the token a spirit also works the exact same way. So that part will also be getting thrown away and the token will not be a spirit, it'll be an angel. Hopefully everybody was able to follow all of that all the way to the end. I know that this one was kind of confusing because there's a lot of different templates and keeping track of the exact details of how every one of them works is no easy feat. Give yourselves a big pat on the back if you were able to get the final challenge question right. While we're on the topic, there's one more thing that I wanted to make a note of, and that's the way clone interacts with all of these types of copy effects. Imagine that we're taking away the divine visitation for a minute. Every time I said that something is part of the characteristics of the token that was created, well, that means that we were modifying the copyable values for the token that we created. And that means that if we were going to use clone to make a copy of that token, well, that means the clone would copy all of the information that was part of the copyable values for that token. However, it would not copy anything that got stapled on after the fact. So, to see exactly what I mean here, let's take a look at our old friend Kiki Jiki. Let's say we make a token with Kiki Jiki. No divine visitation this time, we're just gonna make the token of grizzly bears. Now, we're gonna play clone. With the clone, we're gonna copy all of the information that was part of the information that the token was set up with. So that means, because haste was part of the information, we modified the copyable values, remember? Because haste is part of that information, that means the clone will have haste. On the other hand, the sacrifice at end of turn, that part is not part of the copyable values for the token. Rather, that part is something that we stapled on after the fact. It's an extra instruction that the ability does. Now guess what? The extra instruction that the ability does only applies to the token that was created with Kiki Jiki. It's not gonna be making any other tokens get sacrificed. And so that means that if I clone a Grizzly Bears token that was generated by copying the Grizzly Bears with Kiki Jiki, then the token would not have to be sacrificed at end of turn. Contrast that, if I were to clone a token that I made with Heat Shimmer, well, the Heat Shimmer ability is part of the copyable information, and so that means the clone would copy that one in that case. You can see that this is sort of the inverse of the tokens that were made with Divine Visitation. Anything that the Divine Visitation Angel token would have, the clone does not have, and any of those things that the Divine Visitation token would not have, the clone ends up having. So that's kind of a cool trick, and hopefully this video will help everybody keep track of all of those types of interactions as well. And that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again tomorrow for another daily ruling, but until then, I hope you have a great day.